What's up YouTube, Psionic Kevin here, and it's been just under a month since Yor has been released in Valorant for episode two. I'll do a quick run through of his abilities and his play style and how he is for both ranked and pro play. Yoru's first ability is Bait, which allows him to simulate fake footsteps towards a direction, and these footsteps can also be placed on the ground and activated at a later time, like Killjoy's Nano Swarm. It's important to note that when you send these footsteps through portals on Bind, they sound the same regardless of whether or not they're caused by an actual player. These footsteps will also interact with other abilities such as an enemy raised Boombot. Yoru's second ability is a flash, but the difference is that it has to hit a surface and bounce off of it for it to trigger. If it doesn't hit anything, it just fades away and doesn't do anything. Yoru's third ability is his TP orb, which is free or it resets after two kills. And uh, essentially it allows him to either place it and teleport back to a location where he wants to be safe or use it aggressively with some lineups on certain maps and allow him to get behind enemy lines. Do you note that this orb does have a timer on it so you have to use the ability relatively quickly or allow it to run out. Last but not least his ult spatial drift puts on a mask where you become invisible unless you get within a certain range of enemies but your view is also limited, kind of like a bigger omen blind. During this time where you're both invisible and invulnerable, you run relatively quickly, and this allows you to make rotation super fast or get behind the enemies. Now it's important to note that Yoru is categorized as a duelist, and as opposed to the traditional duelist role, always being first one in or working parts of the map to get map control, he's more of a lurker. Because of the way his abilities are set up, he has a lot of flexibility with the way he moves around the map and sets up certain picks. And so this is why having Yoru on your team comp feels more like a support play in order to mind game the enemy. When it comes to playing pubs on the rank system where coordination really isn't guaranteed, Yoru is going to be a lot harder to be successful with, especially when you set up these plays that depend on your teammates. For pro play, it's a little different because there are set executes and expectations from your teammates that you've played with. And so naturally, Yoru can be a lot better used as like a jet for an entry when you're set up with like a silver recon dart, set smokes, and everyone's blowing out onto the site at the same time. If you're able to use Yoru's orb to TP onto site during that moment where your teammates can cover you and push onto site at the exact same time, then he can be very strong because it can be a difficult shot to land when everything's happening at once. I do see potential in Yoru's kit getting stronger over time, especially into 2022 and 2023, because a larger map pool and larger amount of agents will essentially allow more flexibility in the way different teams and different comps can play around the situation. I do believe that once the map pool and the agent pool starts expanding much larger than it is today, we will start to see tournaments where agent bans and map bans will become much more popular, especially when we have best of three formats. With the current agent and map pool for competitive play, I don't think that Yoru is worth it, especially when you can have other agents do the same thing but better. Ultimately, it comes down to the creativity of the player because not everyone knows everything that he's capable of doing right now. If you're able to read your opponent well, Yoru can definitely be a strong threat against an enemy team. In pro play over time, we should start to see Yoru being used a little more and eventually it'll get to a point where you kind of expect certain things from Yoru players. And I think this will end up being just a battle of which IGL can read the other one better and how their teammates can play off of that information and support each other properly. It can get to a point where it's kind of like playing 40 chess. There has been general discussion over how Yoru feels and uh, I just want to share a really funny interview response by one of Cloud9White's Valorant coach, Moonchopper, that I thought was really funny. I think he is dog. I think he's pee pee poo poo. I don't like his kit to be honest. I feel like a lot of things need some quality of life changes in terms of how clunky it feels to play him. Honestly, Moon, I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you for your insight. Go follow this man on Twitter, by the way. At Real Moon Chopper. So to sum it up, is Yoru strong? In the right context and with the right team and team comp, he can be. But to call him overpowered would be an overstatement. His kit has potential for outplay, but because he has more of a lurking duelist role, rather than just straight entry, you do have to replace him with one of your other characters 
in your roster. And currently, I don't think that that trade-off is worth it. I do think that because Yor is stronger on certain maps that he will be swapped out as a wild card. It'll take some time for him to fit into the meta and for the community to figure out how he should be played. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching the video. Let me know if you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.